G'day everyone and welcome back to Derriere Farms. In our last video we looked at the game mechanics or the initial part of the game mechanics of how the game determines products and the price for those products and how that differs from Farming Simulator 19. Now, you don't have to watch that video, but it will certainly help you understand the differences. Uh, especially in the way the game determines whether there is a fixed price for a product, like diesel, herbicide, uh, or lime, or whether it's a fluctuating price, like crops or productions. And the reason it's so much more complicated, as we explained, is because um, obviously Farming Simulator 22 has seasonal cycles as well as productions built into the base game. So the price mechanic had to be a lot more different. So there is an entire set of files in Farming Simulator 22 that basically, like I said, create those products and then set their prices. Herbicide is a set as a fixed price, whereas wheat, if we look at that, has a seasonal cycle based into it. Um, right now is not the best time for wheat, but you can see we're on the upswing, and that's based on the information provided in that first file, which tells the game which months are good months and which games are bad months to be selling a product in. So let's take a look quickly at, uh, I'll give you a very quick review at something like Herbicide. Because that one's very easy to figure out. So the game tells it it's got a base price and a pallet of Herbicide will always be $2,400 for 2,000 liters. Liquid fertilizer is a little bit more different. It has a base price. However, as you can see, these all count as liquid fertilizer, but they have different prices per liter. And that is set in a different file. As somebody wisely pointed out in one of the comments, prices fluctuate. Of course they do. That's part of the, well, every game so far has had price fluctuations. But if we go with just the base game mechanics as discussed in the last video, wheat would have a consistent price throughout the year. Not, sorry, not throughout the year, year after year. It would always be exactly the same price in December, as it was the previous December, as it was the previous December. The same way as herbicide is the same price throughout the year. Like I said, the only difference is that price fluctuations are built into that chart for products like wheat or cheese or milk. What we're going to look at in this video is how other things now further affect those sell prices so you, you get a nice variety of different prices. So we're going to look at sell points and production points, and I'm assuming everybody knows what the difference between a sell point and a production point is. We're going to look at supply and demand and how it's built into the game. Then we're going to take a look at the price fluctuation chart and why it's not consistent from year after year. Then I'm going to talk or show you a fantastic mod that helps you keep track of the price of your products and lets you know when the best time to sell is based on how much variety in price you're willing to take. So, supply, sell points and production points. They work in a very similar manner. Each one is set up differently and has a different set of coding to it. Again, it works on a price factor or price multiplier 
based on that sell point or that production point. To explain this a little bit further, we'll take wheat as an example, just because crops and productions are a little bit different, but we'll use wheat as an example for crops. Wheat can either be sold directly at a sell point, or it can be sold to a production point. Now, if we look at the difference in prices for wheat right now, you can see there's quite a variety ranging from 1105 down to 881 depending on where you're selling that wheat. Now, my grain mill, this is my grain mill, and this is the games one. I haven't purchased this one, but I've purchased this one. Disregard this price unless you're in multiplayer. At first, I hated the fact that they put um, a buying price for a production point in the menu for something you're never going to get paid for. If I deliver a trailer load of wheat to my own grain mill, I don't get paid for that. That's purely there, that price factor for multiplayer. So if Farmer A delivers a trailer load of grain to Farmer B, who happens to own the grain mill, Farmer B pays Farmer A $904 per thousand liters. So let's talk about the grain mill that I don't own. You'll notice that, that price is slightly lower, but both of the grain mills are going up. That's based on the set of variables that are programmed into the grain mills. For those of you that wonder why I didn't use the in-game grain mill, um, I was sick and tired of traveling all the way to the north end of the map. So I placed my own grain mill in a much more convenient place. Um, the other thing to note as far as sell points go, Goldcrest Valley, and this applies to wheat, barley, most sellable products that can be sold to the train, Goldcrest Valley usually offers you a better price than any of the other production points. That's just the way the train station's programmed. That's also why if you download certain mods, um, and I'm thinking of the again using the donut slash bagel factory as an example you can get a really high price for essentially the same product you're producing out of the normal bakery and it's not cake it's essentially a slightly enhanced form of grain and yet it's paying the same amount as cake does and that's just because the modder fiddled with the price point yeah, I guess we'll, we'll keep calling it the price point or percentage ratio so that it pays out higher. Each sell point or each production point has a variable that helps further determine that value of product. <clears throat> so as you can see, just based on wheat, Production points don't necessarily pay higher than, say, Feed and Grain South or Johnson's Farmer's Market. It's pretty much a rough, and Giants kept it roughly the same, um, a rough payout for grain. Another perfect example of this is milk. Ignore the government drain. I meant to delete that. Uh, it's useless. Um... But we'll take milk. I mean, the bakery's paying, and I own the bakery, so I'm not going to get paid. But hypothetically, it's paying $22.60. As I said, this is mainly a price for multiplayer. But unfortunately, when we get to price fluctuations chart, you will see that that also factors in. So I'm not making that $22.60, no matter how much milk I delivered either to the bakery or to my fine dairy products. So those are two prices that are set by those productions that in single player, I'm never gonna get any money for. Again, the Grocery Mart and Johnson's Farmer's Market and Stop and Go Groceries will also pay for milk in bulk. <sighs> that part I find a little bit unrealistic because, well, 
farmer's market, maybe they have a bottling facility because it's a fairly big facility, but the grocery stores. In real life, you would never see a tanker or a tractor trailer with a tanker holding 30,000 liters of milk pull up to the grocery store and just pump the milk in in bulk. Um, this is kind of on my, my wish list, but I wish that, that the dairy actually produced cartons of milk and you could flavor that to regular milk, um, chocolate milk, strawberry milk, and we would call it packaged milk and then sell it to the grocery stores. Um, I'm trying, as I mentioned in another video, to learn how to mod a little bit better, and that's one of the mods I would like to make. Same thing with another dairy, and have it produce ice cream. I know there's one mod out there that produces ice cream, um, but I think it would be fantastic to have different flavors of ice cream in the game. And naturally then, the grocery store might pay a higher price for prepackaged milk than it, let's say, Johnson's Farmer's Market, who are going to buy it in bulk and then package it themselves. And for all of you out there who don't live in Canada, yes, we do buy milk in bags in Canada. It's also available in jugs, just like it is everywhere else, as well as milk cartons. Just an FYI, because I know a lot of people are curious about how Canadians buy milk. Now, taking the concept of production facilities and sell points one step further, we know that the flour mill right now will pay X amount for wheat or sorghum and it will turn or barley and it will turn it into flour. The key to take away here is that the flour mill does not determine the price that the flour gets set sold at. It only gets to set the price you buy it at or it will pay for it. It is the sell point or the next production point in the line that determines the price for that product. Hence the reason for those of you that have been playing long enough, you know, just because um, wheat is not very good in September. I think we're in September. Yep, we're in September. Wheat's pretty much as low as price in September. However, flour is doing pretty good. So it's worth selling our flour right now to the grocery mart. We might not get the best price, but we're going to go into that in a minute. So, so each production point has its set of purchase price. It then has, as we discussed in another video, its recipe of how much each of that product will turn into a finished product. So wheat produces a little bit more flour than the oats. Um, oats produces, anyway, that's why that game mechanic is there. All right, so let's just change locations while we're on the topic of grain mills. And we're at the grain mill, where I've got plenty of flour ready to go. So this leads into the next concept that's built into the production points Actually, it's not built into the production points. It's complicated. Let me re-explain that. If you own the production point, i.e. the grain mill, like I said, obviously in single player, you are not paying for the amount of wheat or barley that gets delivered here. So there is no supply and demand issue. You can pump the sucker full. However, if you I was to truck my wheat all the way up to the north end of the map where I don't own the grain mill, just like a, it then becomes, as I said, a regular sell point, and it has a price multiplier in it that tells it how much supply there is before it starts to drop the price, and vice versa. Let's look at what the uh, 
in-game help menu says about supply and demand. And supply and demand has been a factor in all the games prior. It's just a little bit more predetermined or we have access to those files now, whereas those files were locked away um, in Farming Simulator 19 and previous versions. All right, so the prices of all sellable commodities change constantly in accordance with supply and demand. You can influence price prices by deciding what you want to put up for sale and how much of it. For example, you only sell wheat for several deliveries, demand will go down considerably, and the price will fall accordingly. This also means the price for commodities you hardly ever sell will go up. That, I find that commodities you hardly ever sell part, I haven't been able to determine at what rate it goes up but I can definitely tell you that the more you pump in of wheat the lower the price goes and I'm going to use an example of wheat at the grain mill where if you sell I think okay I'm going to use a fictitious number because I can't remember the exact number but let's say you sell a uh, hundred thousand liters of wheat to the grain mill the grain mill's instruction set then tells it to push that price down by an X amount. Therefore, you get a reduced price. The same thing would apply to flour. Just using these two as an example. So if I was to take, and I have a lot of flour in storage, um, but if I was to take all my flour and dump it at the grocery mart, which is offering the highest price right now for flour, um, that price would be forced down. And then I would have to, let's say, go to the next highest point, which is either the pizzeria or the fast food restaurant. Now, these are sell points that I've added into the game. Uh, if you don't know how to add production slash sell points, leave a comment and we'll go over that in a separate video. So a very quick summary to where we are so far. The base game, as covered in the previous video, sets the base price for wheat. Let's say that's $9,000, sorry, $900 per thousand liters. That's flat. The next thing is the next sell point sets the price that it's willing to pay for that product. I.e. the flour mill will pay X amount for wheat, turn it into flour. It's not the flour mill that determines the next price. It is one of these sell points or next production points. each of which have a line of code in them to tell them what ratio, like the base game sets, it tells them what multiplier to add to the base game ratio or sell price as a markup, depending on the difficulty level you're playing. It does not set the next price. It is the next either production point or the next sell point. You can oversaturate a sell point, which is supply and demand. And this brings us to price fluctuations and the price fluctuation chart. To understand this chart a little bit better, let's look at milk, for example, and then we'll look at one more product. So the price of milk right now is around 2200 dollars per thousand liters and that doesn't matter whether i'm selling well count my my dairy out but it doesn't matter whether i'm selling to the grocery mart the farms market or the stop and go groceries as i said so let's look at the price fluctuation chart this is now bear in mind as somebody pointed out this is historic and i we already know that it's a shame that it's not dynamic. But just like real life, we know the price of what we sold product for in the past. 
That's why people speculate on the futures market as to where the price is going to go down the road. So right now, September is a pretty low point based on last year's fluctuations. Uh, it's middle of the road. It's kind of low, kind of high, neutral. However, we're getting 2,300 per thousand liters. Last year, the best price we got was in January and we got 1980 so if you look at the price fluctuations chart it tells you that now <clears throat> or in theory it tells you now is a bad time to sell the price is gonna gonna keep going up that may be true or that may not be true all these green indicators that indicate that it's going up could very easily switch Again, depending on supply and demand. As you can see, Stop and Grow Groceries is dropping. There's no reason for it to be dropping. As the price is supposed to be trending upwards towards October. There's then going to be a big drop based on price fluctuations in November. Will it then recover back to the 2000 200 2300 level <clears throat> i don't know my bakery is not my bakery my dairy is 80 percent full so of the 107,000 liters of milk that i have it's only going to take about 30,000 liters <clears throat> that means i would probably want to offload the rest of my milk to one of these other sell points because if i can get 2628 right now at the grocery store am i going to take the chance that it's going to drop again in november and then go back up when i'm getting a better price than i got the entire year previously let's take a look at one more product just because i know it's overinflated right now because i haven't sold it for a while <clears throat> Grocery Mart is paying $12,788 for a thousand liters of cake. So let's see what my price fluctuations were for the previous year. The highest I ever got was 11,007. Now remember, these are average prices and I'll go into that in a second. But as you can see, March, the beginning of the year, the red started higher than the end of the year. So I don't know why that is. Maybe I can't remember that far back, I'm afraid. Maybe I sold cake in February and that forced it down in March. And then, as you can see, the price never fully recovered again. So I'm not going to take the chance right now. The cake is going to reach this price again this year so now would be the ideal time to sell my cake and that would probably in next year's seasonal fluctuations chart show a big drop in october because i have enough cake that it's going to force the price down one other factor to remember and you remember me saying earlier and i can't prove this But the price fluctuations chart is an average. So if you took all these numbers and there's one, two, three, four, five sell points. So you added them all up and you divided it. Chances are that will be the price shown in September's price chart next year. This is why the price fluctuations chart isn't always accurate too because you can get a really low price and a really high price and it averages it out. Now, I don't know what you do, but I know what I've seen other YouTubers do in their Let's Plays is they will go into that seasonal price fluctuations chart and it becomes a little bit of a monotonous process because you go, okay, I've got uh, 20 pallets of cake to sell is now a good time uh oh no september it should go up higher 
but let's check this this uh, current price is oh so twelve thousand and you have to do that product over product you can't just rely on the seasonal fluctuations chart if you do like i said you could have missed out on a fantastic opportunity this brings us to the mod i was talking about okay so the mod i'm talking about is the sales price trigger mod i think that's what it's called i will link it in the description of the video anyway it's very simple to use you press alt o and it opens up a list of all your crops and products that you have available for sale now i'm not too too concerned about my i'm going to be adding these but most of these products my grain crops go to my productions definitely all of my grapes and olives go to production facility as well as sunflower 90 percent of that um, i'm actually building up as my farm gets bigger so i now have a surplus so i'm probably going to start adding these to the sell price trigger but what you can see and let's go up to cake because that's the one we were talking about so the first thing on the left shows you is the product you're talking about it shows you what the highest price not the average price but the highest price is doing so this is real time unlike the graph so it's telling me that the highest price I can get right now is twelve thousand seven hundred and eighty nine dollars sadly it doesn't tell me where that's where I have to go back to the other screen and check to see who is offering that twelve thousand seven hundred the next thing it tells me is that there's a great demand and I got a notification that cheese had a great demand again it didn't tell me where but at least this shows me that there's a great demand um, actually I'm gonna correct myself there it didn't tell me that cheese had a great demand it said there was great demand at Red Bull restaurant and I'm not sure if that's for cheese or sunflower I actually have a couple of great demands that I didn't realize um, that I had I guess I was busy and I missed the notifications okay so the next thing it shows you is the lowest price and this is for as you can either reset it annually or you can keep it running and it will show you what the lowest price on record is as well as the average price on record and then the highest price so again let's go back to cake so yes I'm getting almost 13,000 which is an incredible price for cake uh, especially considering it's September but the highest price the game or this particular game on Elm Creek has ever reached is almost 14,000 for cake I can then change the trigger price so I'm going to change the trigger price up from 10,000 just for game purposes to 11,000 and sadly you can only do this in $50 increments but there I will now get a trigger alert when cake reaches 11,000 and it's going to give me that alert now because cakes already over that price I think 11,000 is a good target price for cake or at least enough of a target price to catch my attention that I want to check it out further so you can either escape out and it won't alert you to anything or if you press OK it'll show you all the products in yellow that are above what I consider a good sale price trigger there we go I'm trying to find a good backdrop so you can see that fairly well so bread cake sunflower oil red marble bowling restaurant where there's a great demand now I understand where my great demand is 
So that's how you use the sale price trigger model. Like I said, it's not the be all and the end all, but it certainly saves you from having to keep checking the prices on a monthly or if you want to call it the way we play daily basis to see where your your products are so the only thing like I said I need to do is check oh scroll down cake 12,000 then I look up then I know to look up and see the, where that cake is being paid the highest and then I can deliver it there even though it's September ignore this chart well don't ignore it <clears throat> it shows you the price trends that are programmed into the game that I talked about in the previous video so the price multiplier for each month varies according on the month that's why we have increases and decreases you then have to factor in the other fact is that we talked about how sell points and production points add their own values how supply and demand adds its own value and then you get your current price so let's quickly go over that one more time this chart is based on the monthly multipliers the set that are set in the base game which i explained in the last video so this month will have let's say a 0.98 multiplier whereas this month might have a 1.3 multiplier and that's why the price is higher and lower sell points production points take that information one step further and add their own values again like i said it'll depend on difficulty i play or i do these videos on easy as most of my viewers are playing on easy to learn the game and then i rely on excuse me i didn't mean to have it paused then i rely on the sale price trigger mod that way i can be busy harvesting a field and all of a sudden I get a pop-up saying great demand or um, let's say corn has now reached a sell price that I think is reasonable and I can let a worker take over while I look up the price where it is and I can either decide to go sell it now or Take a chance at the end of the day that it's gonna still be at that level finally one thing to bear in mind is much like farming simulator 19 you have a set window in the game of how much product you can dump in a certain amount of time I believe prices change I haven't actually done the timer on this for 22 so I'm going to use farming simulator 19 prices changed every hour in 19 that meant that if you had a hundred thousand liters of wheat that you wanted to dump as long as you dumped it between 11 o'clock and noon you would not trigger that price reduction you would get let's say a thousand dollars for a thousand liters for that hour period as soon as noon hit then all of a sudden you would see on the price chart boom that production facility's price has dropped dramatically so that's just a little little bit of a tip for those of you that maybe didn't notice it i hope you found this video useful thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one